welcome back guys I know I said I wasn't going to uh, post up a video this week if you follow me on Instagram I made a story saying that I've been working on the CRX here but recording on it uh, doing all the body work and sanding is kind of difficult it's really kind of boring to watch and it's pretty difficult to record as well because you've got all that dust and it's, it's just monotonous work. It takes a lot of hours to do. I've been working on this thing for the past two days, probably five or six hours each day over the weekend here. And honestly, you can't tell any different uh, than whenever I first started as far as just visually. It's just sanded down and I'm just working through repairing the dents and dings in the car and just getting everything sanded down. So uh, I'll talk about that in a later video once I actually have some footage to show you guys. Um, this car here, I've been having to pull it out and pull it in and it's actually got water spots all over the hood here. Uh, it's bothering me a lot because I mean it's pretty nasty but I know that I, once I wash it up uh, I'm gonna have to pull it out yet again to work on this car here. So it's sitting in here dirty, uncovered. Um, I do have some work to do on this car before Classic Honda's on the Dragon, October 8th. Uh, that's gonna be down at uh, Tell the Dragon in Tennessee, North Carolina. I am gonna be going to that. And uh, this car is pretty much ready to go. I, I probably uh, will do a little bit more uh, buffing on the hood here. Uh, since it's set out in the sun, I have had a little bit more primer shrinkage, so there is some sanding scratches in there that I wanna get rid of. And honestly, I want to repair this um, rear hatch trim piece here. All these old CRXs do that. The, the plastic will peel up off of this trim piece here, but the clips under here will break and it's really difficult to get off there without breaking the clips. I do have some replacement clips that I have had somebody 3D print. Uh, so I'm, I'm really kind of scared to pop that off, not knowing exactly what, I'm gonna, what all I'm gonna break or the method I'm gonna use to, to recover this with the black trim. It's, a, it's actually part of the seal here along the edge of the glass. So if you peel it all off, it leaves a little bit of a gap there. So I gotta figure that out. Hopefully I'll get that done before Classic Condos on the Dragon. But today's video, I'm gonna be dealing with the center garnish here. Um, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to restore the center garnish back to like an OEM look here. Uh, shine it all back up, buff it out, show you the products I use. And actually I'm gonna show you the uh, OEM replica decal that I, I make and sell that will go back on there and make this thing look brand new. So let's go ahead and jump into this and I'll show you how to do it. All right, here are all the products that I use to restore the center garnish. Uh, you start out with the 3M 3000 grit Trizac pad. You don't have to use the 3M Trizac, but 3000 grit is a good sandpaper grit to use to basically sand down the surface of the garnish as long as you don't have deep scratches that you can feel with your fingernail. If you can feel scratches with your fingernail, you'll probably want to step this down to 1500 grit before stepping it up to 2000 and 3000. You don't have to use the Trizac pad or the Trizac 3M brand, but I just find, find that it works a lot better, cuts through the plastic a lot faster than some of the cheaper brands. The next thing that you would want to do after you sand it down is uh, use some sort of compound. I use Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. I used to use some 3M, the step one of this uh, perfected process, but actually I found that the Ultimate Compound does a better job of cutting through, leaving you with a finish that you can actually just polish out a little bit easier with the 3M Perfected Ultra Fine Machine Polish. Now I'll be using the Meguiar's Ultimate Compound on a yellow Buffing pad. This just comes in a little drill kit here. It's got a drill attachment, Velcro. It just hooks onto there and it works really well with any drill that you might have. After the perfected, or actually after the ultimate compound, you will move over to the white pad with the polish, and because this is a polishing pad, it doesn't cut as well as the yellow pad here. So after that, the center garnish should be all complete and you might wanna go ahead and coat it with some sort of ceramic coating, something that's gonna help protect it from the UV. I know ceramic may not protect from UV, but it will help keep the haze down over time as it sits outside. All right, the last thing that I didn't talk about yet was just glass cleaner here. I like the Sprayway glass cleaner. It does a really good job of getting rid of any surface contaminants before you start polishing or buffing, and as well as after, before we go to reapply the decal. So let's go ahead and jump into this, get this center garnish cleaned up first, and then we will try to start sanding. 
All right, the first step of restoring the garnish is going to be to remove the old sticker. But before you remove the old sticker, you definitely want to measure where the sticker is placed because once this is all polished up, there'll be no sign of where the old one was. So let's go ahead and do that first. So we're gonna measure from the left edge over here to the edge of the C. And if you look closely, you may not be able to see it, but it is nine and three eighths inches to the very edge of the clear portion of the decal. All right, the next measurement is going to be from the center of the bottom of center garnish here up to the bottom edge of the clear portion of the R. And that's gonna be two and five sixteenths. Okay, to remove this decal, what I like to use is a just a standard razor blade here. I'm just going to get underneath here as parallel as I can with the surface to prevent scratching it and just slide it underneath the adhesive and peel it off. So what I have done is cut down the 3M Trizac pad to fit onto this drill attachment here. So we're going to be using that and all you need after that is just a little bit of water to spray on the surface here. As you can see, there are still some scratches on the surface. If I were to buff that out even further, uh, you would still see those. So what that tells me is the 3000 grit was not aggressive enough to get those out. So I have actually cut down a piece of 1500 grit and I'm gonna go back over this again with 1500, then 3000, and then we'll try to polish it out and see if these scratches come out. final step of this process is to actually get the decal put on the center garnish here. Now, the decal I'm going to be using is actually my own product that I sell. Uh, send me a message on Instagram and uh, we'll work out the details of how to purchase these. I sell these for $22 shipped. Uh, that includes the shipping and the packaging. Uh, also, if you want to add on the VTEC, uh, it's $35 for both of these shipped uh, anywhere in the U.S. Uh, international will be a little bit extra cost a little bit more to send it overseas. But these are OEM replica decals. This is actually a clear vinyl uh, with the clear cutout around it, just like the original where the R and the X, there's actually one piece and it's got the silver print on top of it. So these are a little bit more detailed than some of the standard die cut silver decals that you see out there. Uh, if you're interested in this, send me a message on Instagram, like I said, and we uh, will work out the details of how to get these. First step of this process is going to be to mark our left edge here 
and I'm going to be using a piece of masking tape. So the left edge of the C, the clear part of the C is 9 and 3 eighths inches from the left edge here. Now from the bottom we're going to go 2 and 5 sixteenths inches. All right, before we apply the decal, we're going to want to make sure this is all cleaned up. So I'm going to use the glass cleaner here and wipe this down. All right, now these decals do come with transfer tape applied. Uh, this is put on here by hand, so these lines here can be deceiving sometimes. Uh, they may not be perfectly lined up, so you want to make sure you go off of the decal itself and not the red lines on the transfer tape. Uh, the, the hardest part of this process is to get this thing lined up this way here. Uh, we have the left edge, we have the bottom edge, but you can always be off just a little bit. One thing that I found uh, that helps is using the uh, diffuser inside the lens here. There's squares and lines that go across here, and you just basically put a tape line across to line it up, and it will give you a better reference point. Now we're not using this top tape line to butt it up against there, we're really just using it to help us eyeball the uh, level of the CRX decal. project is complete. Um, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, all the superficial scratches are out of this uh, center garnish. Here is the other garnish that I have. It's just a USDM model without the fog light right here. The, this is the European model with the fog light on the left side. This will match the left hand drive of the, the car. Uh, let me know what you think about which one I should use. Uh, whichever one I don't use I'll probably end up selling. So I was thinking about selling the uh, European one because I don't plan on hooking up the fog light on the rebuild project. I did do it on my car, but I really don't want to mess with that because I don't have the OEM switch and I didn't want to put an aftermarket switch in there. So I'm thinking about get selling the uh, European model here. Um, I'm happy with how they both look, uh, so I could really just go either way on it. Now, if you're interested in these decals at all, send me a, a DM on Instagram and uh, we'll talk about how to get you one of those. I've got the Civic as well as the VTEC available, so whichever one you're interested in, just let me know. Uh, keep in mind, whenever you do uh, order the VTEC, that the, if, you, if your car is not a VTEC model, the CRX decal actually sits in the center line here, at least very close to the center line. And on the VTEC models, the CRX is actually raised up uh, maybe a quarter inch, so the VTEC uh, and the CRX is center of the garnish here. So you can order just the VTEC and stick it below there, but uh, it, it won't match exactly like the uh, OEM style unless you replace the uh, CRX decal as well. So just keep that in mind. If that's something that doesn't bother you, uh, no big deal, just stick it on there. But if it is something that might bother you in the future, go ahead and order the CRX and the VTEC. That way you can replace them both at the same time and uh, match the OE spec of the VTEC model. So um, I hope you're happy with today's video. Uh, I really just wanted to give a, a quick update on the car here. I got it all sanded down for the most part. Uh, I'm still working on the door jams here. I did do some poor 15 work here on the hood hinge area that I will talk about in a later video. I'm going to keep putting the hours in on this car, working around it, sanding, doing the body work, and uh, you'll see that in a later video once I get to a point where I can show you. Um, hopefully we'll get this thing in epoxy primer in the near future and we'll be working toward paint after that. So stay tuned for that. 